Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another Ask Ian Q&A video on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Ian, of course, and our question today comes from Jamie on Utreon. And Jamie asks, uh, or says, I know that naval Gatling guns like the 20mm CIWS use game twist rifling, but uh, were there or are there any commercial or military small arms that use game twist rifling? So before we dig into this, first off, the answer is yes. And before we dig in further, let's discuss what game twist rifling is. This is also called progressive twist rifling. Uh, rifling, of course, are the lands and grooves in the barrel that cause a bullet to twist as it goes down the barrel. Uh, and typically you have a constant rate of rotation. So every X inches or, or millimeters, the bullet will make one complete revolution. In gain twist or progressive twist rifling, you have a non-constant rate of rotation for the bullet. So the bullet will start at a relatively slow twist rate, and it will end at a relatively fast twist rate. Um, a good example, the Carcano here starts at uh, a rate of one turn in every 19 and a quarter inches, and it ends at a rate of one turn in every eight and a quarter inches. So the twist rate goes up by about two and a half times over the length of the barrel. So why is this done? There have been a lot of proponents of the system who claim that it does things like improve accuracy. It really doesn't. Uh, people who've studied this in some depth, and there are a lot of competition shooters for the past 200 years who, trust me, have had uh, a lot of spare time and a lot of motivation to study this sort of thing. Game twist does not give you anything additional in terms of accuracy. The biggest uh, real effect of game twist rifling is that it reduces the initial rotational impact on the bullet. So you will see this uh, often in larger caliber guns today. Jamie mentioned the 20 millimeter guns because there is the, the diameter at the outside of the bullet is really fairly large. And if you're trying to spin that from zero to like 3000 RPM, instantaneously, in essence, you're putting a lot of stress on the junction between the jacket and the core of the projectile. And that's actually what uh, led to the system being used on some military small arms, like this Carcano, for example. So uh, the 1891 Carcano was the first 6.5mm military adopted rifle. Uh, first, It was the first rifle adopted by military to use a 6.5mm Bullet, and that was a fairly long bullet. It had a lot of surface area in contact with the bore. And the Italians, when they were testing it, found a lot of trouble with uh, jackets separating from bullets and excessive barrel wear. And what they determined was that by using a progressive twist, they could more slowly accelerate the bullet up to its final intended uh, rate of revolution, and this would make it less likely that the jacket would basically shear off of the internal core of the bullet. You've got a copper jacket and a lead core, and the binding between those two elements um, is sometimes uh, questionable. Uh, certainly 1890s Italian manufactured bullets, part of the issue they had uh, quite certainly was in fact manufacturing technique or manufacturing quality because the Italians would eventually drop this uh, progressive twist feature in their Carcano rifles, the Model 18, uh, Model 1941 rifles, which are essentially the same thing as this but a little bit shorter, use the same 65 millimeter cartridge, and they have a standard twist barrel, and it works just fine because bullet production quality had increased substantially. So that's the big thing that you get, is uh, less immediate shock between the, the jacket and the core of the projectile. And as you can imagine, if you go to 20 millimeter or 25 millimeter or 30 millimeter projectiles, uh, that, that can become much more important. And that's where progressive twist is usually seen. So what are some of the other systems that have used or continue to use progressive twist? Obviously the Carcano is one. Um, that's the Model 1891 Carcanos, the rifles and the carbines. Both were originally developed using it. Probably the most numerous uh, gain twist guns out there that people may or may not recognize are Colt revolvers. So the original Colt percussion revolvers from the Dragoons forward, the 1848s, 49s, 1851s, 1860s, uh, these were all gain twist barrels. Now Colt was doing this before a lot of the really serious studies were done on the true benefits of 
progressive twist rifling. None of Colt's competitors, like the Remington revolvers, didn't bother to do this. They just used straight twist rifling. So it may have been something that Colt was using as an advertising uh, perk, something that people would think made the guns better. There's also potentially reason to believe that it was it made the guns easier to clean if you had a paper patched bullet or if you were just using a solid lead bullet, uh, spinning it up more slowly, uh, deposited less rifling, less lead onto the rifling, and thus created less fouling. These are issues that aren't really relevant to us anymore because we're not using black powder. Um, a couple others, uh, a guy named Harry Pope was a very famous custom barrel maker uh, back in the black powder era into the early years of the 1900s. Uh, he made a lot of gain twist barrels and there are some, you know, there's some history of gain twist barrels where there are people who think that the guns, the gain twist was more accurate because Harry Pope's barrels were gain twist. But the reality is Harry Pope's barrels were more accurate because Harry Pope spent a lot of time and a lot of careful measurement and machining making them very precise and very repeatable. The fact that he used a gain twist system is sort of ancillary to their performance. Uh, Modern day, we still do occasionally see it. Uh, Smith & Wesson's 460 uh, X-frame revolvers actually use a progressive twist. They start at 1 in 100 and drop to 1 in 20. Uh, and that, I think, is, now, having not talked to Smith & Wesson, I suspect it is because um, there's a wide variety of bullets that people are going to use in those things. Uh, people are going to load those very hot, and you actually do have the potential because of how high performance, how high velocity, and large bore that cartridge is, that you have the risk of separating the jacket from the lead core of a poorly constructed bullet that someone's hand loaded. So the 500 Smith & Wesson does not use progressive twist rifling, but the 460 does. And the last thing that I will point out before we shut this video down is there is also such a thing as progressive depth rifling, where the rate of twist stays the same the whole time, but the actual depth that the rifling is cut into the barrel changes. And typically this is, uh, it starts shallow at the muzzle and it gets deep at the breech, and that has some advantages for muzzle loading firearms. But you don't see it, it's really not a thing once you get to breech loading guns. Anyway. Hopefully that answered your question, Jamie. This was a, a fun one to do some research on to make sure I had all of my ducks in a row before I started it. Now, if you'd like to have your question answered in a video like this, head on over to Patreon or Utreon. The fine folks who subscribe there help keep forgotten, forgotten weapons running every day, and we have running threads for questions like this on both of those platforms every month. Thanks for watching.